I think um, like are we always really always on the same page as women? Well, Kim, uh, thank you so much for your questions. Um, actually, no. Um, the answer is it's yes first and no. Uh, yes, there is a branch of women in the party in Pro. Uh, no, I never engage uh, with that branch. Um, and also regarding um, your questions, I, I did want to say some numbers about how um, women in politics and women participating in the political lives are in Argentina. So according to some numbers, uh, not only from, uh, I'm not talking only about women participating in, in my party, but in the political landscape in, in Argentina in 2010, in 2010 we have uh, a 19-percentage of women participating in, in politics. Uh, in 2020, 10 years after, we only have 6% more. So it's going down? No, no, no. 19, oh. 25. So 6% mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. uh, so 25%. Of course, we acknowledge uh, getting more women into politics. It's a long career, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's not uh, it's not an easy thing, but we do need to have more affirmative actions taken more uh, in order to get more women into the political life. Um, a good thing about Argentina is that we have a parity law, so in terms of the legislative, so in all the lists that are presented for the national um, legislative um, branch, we do have one man, one woman, one man, one woman. So that gives us that our national congress is almost parity. So we have almost 40%, 45% in the uh, deputies chamber and in the Senate. And currently we have a president both in the Senate and in the um, deputies chamber. So good things also we need to acknowledge that are happening in terms of women's participation in the political uh, landscape. However, I have to say also regarding your question that um, sometimes, and this is of course a personal opinion, um, sometimes um, a lot of women that uh, do have an important or do play an important role, uh, they do not represent the the whole landscape on uh, women that are participating into politics, mm -hmm. and I think this 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 is also an issue that is happening in conservative parties that sometimes. Um, people like me or women like me that we do have a more progressive view in terms of social uh, policies or social issues are not represented in in the bigger spheres. Sometimes we do, uh, but not always. So I think that's also uh, a debate that we should have as conservative parties um, to, to be able to represent all the different views you have in the in the women's uh, in all the women's that are taking part of the of the political party. So, okay, um, can you give an example, for example, for for um, policy that where you where you would say um, women that are engaged in conservative parties um, don't really have you know in mind when it comes to the public opinion or public needs. Well, I think the quota, the quota discussion, uh, we had a lot of our deputies that uh, were advocates, advocating for parity, but not all of them. And I also wanted to say that um, abortion was another one, mm -hmm. uh, of course. Uh, I mean, I celebrate the diversity, and we do have a very diverse view uh, in terms of social uh, policies, and I, I really celebrate that. But sometimes some of the issues that are maybe um, discussed in an institutional level uh, may sometimes represent more one view than another one. Uh, I think that is also changing <laughs> due to uh, a lot of these women raising their voices, really brave women. Uh, but I think it's something that we need to discuss it and need to take uh, active measures in order to be able to really have a very diverse voice in, in all the issues. I see, so of course, um, women doesn't only you know represent the same ideas and opinions. Of course, we, we often forget that when it comes to this. Of course, um, we are all diverse still, exactly. but um, there are, as we could see, um, the average of women representing um, um, the people in parliament is. is something around 
20-25%, right? So uh, it's also kind of average from the numbers that we just heard from Jagalan. So um, you, uh, Flor, you, you also work and participate in a very male-dominated um, sector, such as security and tech. Um, what makes it so difficult for women to enter these kind of fields, um, in your opinion? That's, uh, I don't have the, um, an answer for that, because sometimes I don't quite understand what is, why it's so difficult, because when you look at history, for example, in the tech industry, when you see the first uh, programmers were actually women. So we need to analyze why we uh, are behind in that, in that career. I think that one of the things that we should analyze is regulations. For example, when it comes to maternity and paternity license, we were actually talking about that yesterday with Jargalan and Mira and other uh, of our colleagues. And uh, I personally believe that we, um, as women, uh, or as uh, also as mother, parents, uh, uh, and also men that uh, can uh, have kids, um, we do need to have the same license. Because if not, that leaves w women in a, in a step back. Uh, let's put an example. This may not happen in big companies that have a big budget, but let's take a small company that has a, a very limited budget. Uh, who do you think if you have two candidates for a same job with the same qualifications? Both of them are in their 30s. Both of them are married. Who do you think a company will have more benefits on hiring? Of course, the men. Because in those countries that women have more uh, months on maternity leave, that will be um, a burden for the company because they will have to pay, of course, that woman the maternity leave and they won't have a person working. So how do you fix that? It's not by taking away maternity leave. It's by making maternity and paternity leave the same. That, that's uh, uh, my opinion on things that we can do to start balancing <laughs> a table that it's not balanced. Um, so also um, having more women in, in places where you take the decisions that will affect the, the population. I mean, if you don't have women that n they know a specific situation that will affect women, then the men that are drafting those policies, it's not that they won't uh, include them those topics because they don't want to. Maybe they don't know. So you need representation. And that's why I really agree with um, also another thing to, to, to put on the table that representation matters. If you're a young kid and you only see the CEOs of the big tech companies that are all male, when you see that entrepreneurs are <laughs> mostly men, when you see that the most, uh, like the all country leaders, I when you see a photo for the UN of the EU, you see most men, then you don't see yourself represented there. So it's crucial that we have more women on those positions in order also to foster and encourage girls that are developing, that are choosing a university degree to see, hey, if she could make it, I could make it. I see. So representation also as a mean for participation. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. 